大家好,我叫邓宏福 Hello everyone, thank you for having me I'm honored to be invited for the keynote at this uh, Apache Con Asia 2021 I wish I could give this presentation live in China Unfortunately, it is not uh, possible at the moment I was in China many times and of course I really like it there. My ancestor actually came from China, Fujian area. I would like to talk a little bit about my background. Why am I here today speaking about open technologies? You see on the screen is the map of Vietnam. I grew up in the Mekong Delta at the south at the bottom there is a small black dot that is my hometown on the left hand side you see some photos during my childhood my father and my mom in the middle there together with me um, and on the right hand side are some photos of Kanto city in the recent years my family was poor as most of the people in Vietnam at that time, the country was poor. There are, of course, a lot of problems in developing countries. Some of the most critical ones are poverty, corruption, healthcare system, education, safety, inequality. Many of these problems are caused by the lack of resources, the lack of knowledge, the lack of access to information and tools. Since I was little, I knew that I must study hard, work hard for a better future, a better life. But I did not know how to achieve it, not just for myself, but also for the people around me, and even for more people in the society. Until one day, I discovered the free and open source movement. I got really inspired by the communities of like-minded individuals working together, openly and freely sharing code, ideas, knowledge, solutions for the benefit of everyone. This is just amazing for me. Immediately, I started to benefit from the knowledge I gained from the people I met in the community who showed me how to write command line, showed me how to fix my computer using Linux, and many other amazing free software tools that I learned over the years. My life shifted to a more positive and promising direction that got me very excited. I did not only see a way to achieve what I want for myself and for my family, I recognized the possibilities to tackle issues for more people, for our society, by adopting the free and open sharing principle. And that's how I got into FORCE. Later, I started FORCE Asia with the goal to introduce the free and open source concept to more people in developing countries and most importantly to empower people to turn their ideas into reality. The mission of Force Asia is to improve people's lives by sharing open technologies, knowledge, resources and building a sustainable force ecosystem. Today FOSS is not only free and open source software, but we see it as a free and open source solutions. What have we done at FOSS Asia to achieve our mission? I want to give you some examples. In the early days of the organization, we focused um, a lot on events and local meetups. We wanted to create a platform where people can meet and exchange ideas. At the Force Asia Summit, we invite open source projects, communities, 
come together, present cellular, their solution, and connect with um, Asian contributors from everywhere. We managed to run the event, the Force Asia Summit, now for 12 years. And through the summit, we established a strong connection with user groups, community across Asia and Europe, with whom we collaborate to run other events, such as the Open Tech Summit in Berlin, Vietnam, Thailand, Sri Lanka, or in China. We actually um, ran the Open Tech Summit in Suncheon um, in previous years. As the community became bigger, we started to run more programs and conduct more workshops. Since 2016, we introduced our own online coding program called CodeHeat. Thousands of participants have learned how to code and how to contribute to open source projects through this program. Active contributors in the contest receive certificates and the winners even get financial rewards. We love to do all kinds of hands-on activities, like running hackathons, trainings at school or university to foster open source in education. Our projects The first few software projects started to come out of the Force Asia community. As you know, when people get together, they have all kinds of ideas, and then some ideas were materialized when developers and designers start to code on them. In 2014, we moved our repository to GitHub, and there, the contributor base for our initial projects really increased tremendously. Over the course of time, we have uh, worked on many projects, Linux distributions, games, shared engines, image sharing apps, personal voice assistant. Some of these projects get archived over time, but other projects stay active and are developed over many years. One of our most uh, well-known projects is properly Event Yay an event management system integrated with other open source platforms like GC, Big Blue Button, or Rocket Chat. We use this system to, to organize our own event. Apart from software, we are working more and more on a combination of software and hardware projects like the SUSE AI Smart Assistant in the recent years. And we are particularly proud of the Pocket Science Lab. Following the idea of having a lab in your pocket, this is an open hardware project that combines various measurement functions on one board, including oscilloscope, multimeter, signal generator, logic analyzer, and more. The Pocket Science Lab, or BS Lab, works as well with many sensors on the market and uh, you only need to connect it with your mobile phone uh, or your laptop and start to uh, collect measurement and all kinds of data. So these examples that I just showed you prove that it is possible to solve problems we encounter with the contributors from different regions no matter what background, religion, or political views people have. We often see political conflicts on the news, but at the same time, the developers from these very same regions work together on our channels to solve problems together in a very peaceful way. So, I want to, to emphasize that by openly sharing knowledge and technologies, we are able to collaborate on a global scale. At Force Asia, we have proven that it is possible to learn together, to develop solutions together, software and now hardware. We even develop 
hardware as I show you that is used by people from all around the world with a very limited resources. So this open model of sharing is the foundation for a better future where we use global developed technologies to produce locally, to produce more environmental friendly, and to, to produce more healthy. Which brings me to a problem that I want to, to talk about today. The global health problems, the corona pandemic. Like many people around the world, this is the problem that impacted my life personally and most of the people in our community. If you are here today watching this video, you are among the lucky ones, you and I. We are not fighting for our life, why many people are at this very moment. Three months ago, on the 28th of April, we received a news that our core maintainer, our good friend, Arif Chama, passed away in Aliyah, India. He was 26 years old. He was one of the top 15 open source contributors from the whole of India. You know how many millions of developers are there in India? Why did he die? It was a lack of oxygen. His family, his friends, traveled across the city, queued up day and night to collect some oxygen cylinders for him. But when they finally got one, it was too late. When we heard it, we could not believe it. We could not accept what happened to Arif and many other people in India. We lost one of the most talented people in Force Asia community. Arif, he deserved to live. This pandemic continues to spread out to Southeast Asia the last few weeks. We do not have enough resources and facilities in developing countries like Vietnam, for example. And it is very sad to know that more and more people will die. My whole family is also under quarantine at the moment. What solution do we have? I personally believe that free and open source model can address many of the problems, including this global health crisis. But in contrast, many examples show that the current proprietary design, production, distribution model can cost actual lives. On the screen here, you see one example. Volunteers produce 3D printed valves to save lives during the COVID-19 um, treatments. The company that originally produced the ventilators had refused to release the design files for the broken parts and it was not possible to get door parts because of supply chains had broken down due to the lockdowns everywhere. Even if local makers like these people are able to help themselves, they do not have the access to digital sources. They are under legal threat of copyright law. Why should we have copyright law? We need to empower people everywhere by sharing knowledge experience with open technologies. And people are doing it right now around the world. I have seen many open source solutions developed to address COVID-19 issues in all kinds of areas. Application for contract tracing for social distancing platforms that offer volunteer opportunities connecting people and resources, application for remote work for home education, open source hardware that provides equipment to medical services just like the ventilators, 
there is a full leaf of open source solution tackle COVID-19 issue released by the European Union just a few days ago. The technologies are available, but the problem is how fast can technologies reach the citizens? A lot of medical equipment is produced in just a few countries and factories around the world. The global production of many goods is very centralized, and this is a huge, huge problem. Think of cheap production, production of ventilators, of vaccines, and even toilet paper. The world is depending on centralized monopolies and manufacturers. This problem existed way before the pandemic. But with the borders closed, supply chains breaking apart, and lockdowns around the world, this problem has become an existential threat throughout the pandemic for people everywhere. We already know for a long time that the way we produce goods needs to change. The way we distribute products around the world through big container ships needs to change. We need more resilience. More efficient, more humane way to address our consumption needs, and it is now the matter of life and death. So I'm asking you, asking myself, what is preventing us from not buying from human exploiting companies? What is preventing us from not shipping goods around the world that damage our climate? What is preventing us from sharing medical knowledge to create vaccines locally? What is preventing us from sharing schematics of ventilators locally? If the industry were more open, and if knowledge and technologies would be available, then we would be able to solve our problems locally. Only by being able to produce locally, we can act fast enough to save ourselves and the people we love in this pandemic. In our modest projects at Force Asia, which I showed you earlier, we have done it and even done it with hardware. If we can do it, why can't more people do it? Why can we scale up this idea and do it on a global scale? Our pocket science lab is an example of how sharing is possible in an open ecosystem. The Force Asia community released the schematics, build of materials, design, casing, software, firmware. Anyone is able to produce it now. We need more people to do the same. We need more examples like this, but on a much much bigger scale. The second problem that I already mentioned briefly before is the global environmental crisis and climate change. This is the problem that is very close to my heart. This is the picture of the flood in central Vietnam. It takes place every year during the monsoon, the raining season. This repeated disaster. Has become worse and worse every year in Vietnam. It caused big losses in agricultural production. Thousands of people lost their homes, their lives. Many children lost their parents, and were unable to have a normal life. The next picture is the Mekong Delta flood in Canton City, my hometown. A one million population city. This street that you see here is a um, only one kilometer from my home. My whole family, three generation, have been living there. But the expert, international experts, scientists, predicted that much of the Mekong Delta region will be eliminated under the impacts of high tide. By 2050, everything will go under the water. Many challenge this assumption. 
People do not believe it will happen. People do not believe the impact of climate change until they really experience it. How many climate disaster have happened already this year? Just last week. You know it better than me, Chen Chou. The highest single rainfall on record in history. The country had never seen anything like this before. Last week, also record rainfall in Western Europe. Almost 200 people died. More than 700 injured, and many still missing. Then、um, the Western North America heat wave. 500 people have died in Canada. These events happened within the last two months, June and July. And all the disasters are not yet forgotten. Bushfires in Australia earlier this year, just like the previous years. You can find a huge list of disaster on Wikipedia when you search for 2021 in climate change. So, what can we do to stop climate change? Well, I do not know if we if we could actually still able to stop. Maybe it is already too late. But don't we want to do something? Yes, I still want to do something. I just don't want to sit there and do nothing. I read about open source projects that try to tackle climate issue, such as softwares for climate、uh, modeling and evaluation, citizen science initiatives, application to understand and reduce your carbon footprint. Software to measure air pollution, or application that have to change our consumption habits. Open source tools to collect and analyze climate data. There are also bigger ideas like open source solution to improve power grid infrastructure and open source in the energy industry. Then there is work even on、um, an open source chip architecture. Grisfy. Grisfy is gaining traction with its customizable open source design and lack of licensing fees. Can this freedom, up to the microchip level, help to develop better and more efficient hardware to tackle climate change and other problems? Can we engage more people to find solution for our global problems? I believe so. But we need everyone to support this paradigm shift from a closed, proprietary competition mindset to an open and collaborative way of solving our problems on a global scale. Some of the most well-known and advanced products of this planet are deadly harmful to the environment. Look at products of Apple. It is seemingly impossible to get an iPhone repaired by a local repair shop. Lots of other products are not better either. They result in huge amounts of electronic waste that will often be exported to poor countries and harm people in those countries. We need the right to repair. We need access to schematics for that. Openness is not only a wish for free and open source contributors; it is a means to solve our global environmental problems. Imagine if all tech would be free and openly, liked, with the possibility to fix and upgrade so many devices around the world, we would avoid huge amounts of waste and climate harming production. I want to talk a little bit about planned obsolescence. So this is when companies do to make consumers buy more and more of the same product again and again. According to Wikipedia, planned obsolescence is a policy of planning or designing a product 
with an artificial limited useful life or a purposely grail design so that it becomes obsolete after a certain period of time. Farmers do not have access to the software that runs their equipment. Therefore, they are unable to repair them. John Deere, the world's largest agriculture machinery maker, told the copyright office, Farmers don't own their tractors, but instead, farmers receive an implied license for the life of the vehicle to operate that vehicle. Can you understand that? You buy a tractor, but you do not own it, and you can't repair it either. We need products that can be repaired and be upgraded and products that last forever. Only then we can minimize our negative impact on the planet and our life. Open access to technical product details and information about production is essential to achieve this. But we also need this openness to be enforced by the laws. Again, a complete paradigm shift is needed. So that bring me to my call for action. I talk about how we need open source on all layers. How the open development model can help us to solve world problems. Now is the time to foster global connection and knowledge exchange. Only by working together, we can make a bigger stride in solving the world's most pressing problems. So, what can each of us do? Learn about open technologies every day, join the community and contribute. There are many ways to participate, from organizing events like this, have our um, in open source club at university or local group, contribute code, documentation, design to an open source project, or even start your own open source project. The most important thing is you should start your journey now, today, or continue your journey, rethink your priority, look at the bigger picture. Secondly, share your knowledge about open collaboration model with anyone around you. We need a paradigm shift. We need everyone to be on board. Change the mindset of the people around you through hands-on projects. Work with your local government and teachers. Even in bad system, not everyone in the government or institution is bad. People are often try to do the right thing nevertheless. Identify people you could work with around you. Enlist their support, do workshop together with them, do projects together with them. Support open source business or start your own open source business. The Silicon Valley corporate startup culture is great for profit maximizing, but it is a huge loss for society and a threat for the environment and our assistance. We need business that work for the benefit of the society as well as the company itself. So, Buy from open source companies, support them, start your own company with open technologies or encourage your current companies to open their software, open their hardware and release uh, more information on, on products to the world that help society. And finally, I would be very happy if you stay in touch with me and join us at the Force Asia Summit 2022, there will be a dedicated check about open source solutions that tackle world problems. And uh, if you are curious about our projects at Force Asia, please check out our repositories on GitHub. You can also get a pocket science lab from our shop online. The next big event uh, in Asia Hottest on eventyay.com will be the UbunCon Asia. Force Asia is also a co-organizer of this event. Um, if you would like to connect with Linux developers in Asia, please join, uh, please join us there. 
is on twenty uh, fifth and twenty sixth of September. And um, yes, so that that is the end of my presentation. Once again, uh, thank you very much for having me. You can find my contact on the slide.